days. Long time no hear from, but I'm all right. Still homeless, hanging in there. This is Maccabees. Take one, part one. Alexander of Macedonia waged many wars and slaughtered the kings of the earth. He made his way to the ends of the earth. He despoiled many nations. He was exalted and ruled over the heathens. He fell sick and divided his kingdom amongst his servant friends. After he died, they all put on crowns and did much evil in the earth. A sinful offspring shoot called Antioch Epiphanos became king of the Greek empire. Other lawless men arose out of Israel and made a treaty with the heathens and gymnasiums were built. Antioch wanted to be king of Egypt. He entered into it with forces of chariots and elephants. He made war on Ptolemy, king of Egypt, and he plundered the land. Antioch rose up against Israel and entered Jerusalem with a force and took gold and furniture. There was great mourning throughout Israel. Two years later, the king sent a tax collector officer to collect tribute from the inhabitants of Judah. He spoke peacefully and they trusted him. Then he struck their city with a great blow, destroyed many in Israel. The city of David became their citadel. The king ordered everyone to give up his own religious practices. Many of Israel obeyed because the penalty for disobeying the king was death. He appointed inspectors over the people, and the real Israel went into hiding to worship. This unholy king erected a dreadful desecration upon the altar and burned the books of law. On the 25th of the month, these heathens offered sacrifices on their altar. They persecuted the Lord's people, and if women obeyed God's laws and circumcised their children, they hung and killed mother and baby together. Yet some men in Israel stood firm and resolved not to eat what was unclean. They preferred death to sinning. A man named Matthias, seeing his people Israel being ruined, put on sackcloth and grieved. Then the king's officers, who were forcing people to give up their religion, came to town and said to Matthias, Carry out the king's commandment, and be friends to the king, and be distinguished with silver and gold. And Matthias said, I and my sons will live accordance to the agreement, but our forefathers will not abandon the law and the ordinances of God. Then the heathen and I, oh sorry, then the heathen went to offer that pagan sacrifice on their pagan altar, and Matthias, filled with zeal, aroused to anger and slaughtered him, tore down their altar. Then he fled to the mountains, and but other law followers went down to the wilderness, and the king's agents pursued them and attacked them on the Sabbath day, and they died. Matthias heard about it and resolved to defend themselves if attacked on Sabbath day. Also, the Hasidians were warlike Israels and joined them, and they mustered a force and struck down sinners. Matthias and his friends went and tore down the heathen altars and forcibly circumcised all the children within the borders of Israel. So they believed they rescued the law from the hands of the heathen and did not let the sinners triumph. He said, Be zealous for the law, giving your lives for the agreement. Be strong for the law, for by it you will obtain glory. He said, listen to Simon, your brothers. Judas Maccabeus will be your captain. Conduct the people's warfare. You must gather around you all who obey the law and avenge the wrongs of your people. Give heed to what the law commands. He blessed them and he died. His son Judas, who was called Maccabeus, rose in his stead. God's people had a military captain as their leader, and he punished and hunted those who disobeyed the law, and he angered many kings. His memory is blessed. He went among the towns of Judah and destroyed the ungodly. He averted wrath from Israel. He was renowned to the ends of the earth and rallied those who were perishing. Meanwhile, Apollonius got heathen forces from Samaria to make war on Israel. Judas learned of it and went out to meet him and killed him and took spoil, including his sword. Judas fought with Apollonius' sword till the day he died. Then the Syrian army went out to make war on Judas because he set the king's commandment at naught. Judas went with a few men, and he said, How can we fight such a strong host? We haven't even eaten today. Judas said, There is no difference in the sight of heaven between saving through many or through few. Victory in war does not depend on the size of the force. Force strength comes from heaven. 
he himself will crush them before us because we are fighting for our lives and our law. Be not afraid of them. And Judas fell on them suddenly, and Sarah and the king's people were crushed. Fear of Judas began to fall upon the heathens around them. When Antaeus heard reports, he was angry. He opened his treasury and gave his forces a year's pay in advance and told them to be ready. Then he saw that the money in his treasury was exhausted because the tribute was small to the divisions and the distresses that he brought upon himself upon the land by doing away with the laws that were in effect from the earliest times. He was very perplexed and feared he would not have enough for his lavish lifestyle and gifts, so he resolved to go to Persia to get tribute off those countries. He left Lysias in charge while he went. Lysias gave half the forces and half the elephants to Antioch and orders about everything he wanted done to send a force to crush Israel, and settle aliens in their borders, and distribute their land among them. The land... I'm sorry, the phone's ringing. It's Carl. Sorry, Carl. The king and the other half of his forces set off from Antioch, the royal city. Lysias chose warlike men, 40,000 friends of the king, and sent them to Judah to destroy it. They camped near a town called Emmanuel. The merchants of the country heard about it and took a great quantity of gold and silver and fetters and came to get the Israelites for slaves. They were joined by forces from Syria and the Philistines. Judah saw the situation and said, Let us repair the destruction of our people. The congregation gathered together to make ready for war. They prayed for mercy and asked for compassion. They fasted, put on sackcloth, ashes, and torn clothes, and unrolled a lost scroll which had some pictures of the heathen idols. They brought the first fruits of the tithes and gathered the Nazarites that had fulfilled their vows. They cried to heaven, The priests are humiliated. The heathens have gathered together to destroy us. And they sounded the trumpets. Judas appointed officers, colonels, captains, lieutenants, and sergeants. He ordered those men who were building houses, planting vineyards, betrothed to women, or who were just afraid to go home as the law provided. The army moved and camped south of Emmanuel, and Judas said, Be brave and ready to fight, for it is better for us to die in battle than to witness the ruin of our nation. And that was 1 Maccabees 3.9.